Minecraft's naturally generated structures are great and they really flesh out the game. However, I've always wondered what it would be like if they were to get an upgrade into something much, much bigger. I guess that's where I come in. I plan to transform the entirety of Minecraft. That's including all of its naturally generated structures and biomes. So if this video gets 100,000 likes, I'll make more of them. I say that's asking too much, but in the last video, you more than doubled it. So it should be an easy task. Come on guys, we got this. Also, only 21% of you guys watching right now are actually subscribed. Let's get that number up a little bit. So if you're not already, then please consider subscribing. So we're going to start by transforming the desert pyramid. It comes naturally generated within a desert biome and was added in 1.3.1, which was over eight years ago. But I'm sure that you already knew all of that. I think it's time to update the design, making sure to keep its main features, but also I'm going to put my own little twist on it. Now I've used this program a few times now for my builds and it's perfect for large scale terrain editing. I could find a normal desert biome in Minecraft. However, if I did, it would take a long time trying to neaten up the terrain and create a space big enough for the size of the pyramid I've got in mind. Also using World Painter, I'm able to make the landscape at any height I want and then merge it into an already existing Minecraft world. When making the custom desert, I wanted to include big dunes throughout, making it a bit more like a real life desert. I've also included a few rivers cutting through the landscape, connecting into the surrounding ocean, and a small oasis off to one corner of the map. And this is what we were able to come up with. Now we have a huge desert landscape to fit our pyramid transformation perfectly, and that little oasis feature out in the distance to break up the dunes. In the middle of the map is where our pyramid will reside. And as you can see, it's going to be quite a lot bigger. 15 times bigger, in fact. So now that we've built out our guideline, it's time to build the pyramid. Thanks to WorldEdit, I'm able to whip this up quickly. So I got it in the right position and blended it straight down into the ground. Of course, we've made it hollow so that we can build an interior a little later on. Now, it was pretty tricky knowing where to start. I had a concept in mind, but actually applying that to a large blank pyramid was pretty difficult. So I started by putting together a fire pit atop a pillar using campfires and stained glass to get that flame effect. Now, as you'll see during this clip, I was struggling with the positioning and working out how to transition the pillar into the pyramid. I ended up positioning it on all four corners and just bringing it straight down to merge and keep this as a placeholder for the time being. But I was happy with the overall design of the tower, so I kept it to one side for later use on the rest of the build. Right, before you skip ahead to the craziest part of this build, please support the channel and hear me out while I advertise the best mobile gaming experience known to mankind, Monster Legends. Monster Legends is free to play on both Android and iOS, and you can download it using the link in the description to get free rewards. This game is super unique and multi-layered. There are hundreds of different monsters to collect, and they have everything from this King Kong Flaming Hot Doritos edition to a heavy metal Wolverine comes supercharged creeper, and quite possibly the biggest crossover of them all, Kung Fu Panda playing the role of Gandalf while channeling his inner Naruto into a Rasengan. That's pretty epic. You can get new monsters by breeding two together, blossoming into a beautiful beautiful little monster family to take into battle and slaughter your enemies with. Although don't forget to feed them plenty of snacks first, or you won't be battling anyone. There are different PvP modes to choose from, including special dungeons and an adventure map. Plus, you can even fight against your friends in real time and become the dream of Monster Legends. Every week, the game has new events to keep things fresh and provide you with plenty of new epic adventures to embark on. You can go ahead and download the game using the link in the description, which not only gives you special rewards, but also helps the channel by supporting our sponsor. By clicking the link down below, you'll get 50,000 food, 50 gems, and 300,000 gold, which equates to a whopping $15 in real life money. And I mean, who doesn't love free stuff? <laughs> a big thanks to Monster Legends for sponsoring this video. And if you really wanna support the channel, then make sure you go check it out. So on a regular Minecraft pyramid, there are a few main features. You've got the entrance, the interior, and the two side entrances, along with the two towers out front. Now, instead of building a tower design for the front of the pyramid, I thought I would begin building a statue of an Egyptian pharaoh sitting on a throne. Like I said earlier, I'm working from reference images, which always helps when building organic such as this. And thanks to Worldedit, well I can build one side of the body and mirror it to the other side to complete the form. As you can see, I'm using black stone and gold blocks, which are gonna persist throughout this build. I played with the idea of sticking with sandstone, but I figured black stone will really help the build stand out from the desert. Plus, it's a sign of the pharaoh's riches. Usually when building, I would stay far away from gold blocks, as they're particularly hard to pull off in a build, 
because they can be quite garish. So it was quite the challenge featuring them in this build without it being too overbearing. With the pharaoh made of black stone, I built the throne out of primarily gold blocks, detailing it here and there to break up the colour and build a platform for the statue to reside. Of course, we can't just have the statue floating in the sky, so we're going to bring the platform all the way down, making a frame of black stone and, later, replacing the middle section with black concrete. However, we're not done yet, so at the foot of the statue, we're going to give the pharaoh a hound. Obviously, you'll recognise one of these hounds, as they're used a lot in Egyptian art, and even most famously, Anubis, which depicts a pharaoh's body with a dog's head. I start by building out the body and then its legs either side. Animals depicted in Egyptian art and hieroglyphs have rather long looking limbs when positioned like this hound. Similarly to the Great Sphinx of Giza. With the dog complete, I built out the platform beneath to match the one behind, repositioned the whole thing closer to the pharaoh and built the base down, angling it away from the statue. With the full statue complete, it was time to try positioning it into the pyramid. I spent quite a while tweaking this until I got the right positioning and of course mirrored it to the other side. With both statues cut into the pyramid design, between them would reside the main entrance. The entrance of the vanilla pyramid somewhat resembles a face, which is what I originally had planned for this design. However, in the end, I thought it would be better to make a grand entrance, so I used one of the seven wonders of the world, Petra, as inspiration. Now I'm sure a lot of you recognise this anyway as it's featured in Indiana Jones The Last Crusade. It's an oldie but a goldie. With the first level complete I capped it off with a roof and built up the second level, on which resides three separate towers. Choosing Petra as a base design was perfect, as it contained plenty of great architecture and shapes, and includes areas to add detailing on flat sections of wall. I finished off the design by walling off behind the pillars below adding a few small fire plinths and repositioning it back towards the pyramid. Floating above, I had previously planned out how I wanted the wall sections to connect back into the pyramid. However, I decided to lower the towers behind the statues and have the connecting wall lower down as well, as otherwise the wall design would be too overpowering and result in the pyramid shape being compromised. I also connected the entrance design into the statues either side and built down a gradual slope to connect down to the desert floor. We still have blank spaces either side of the entrance, so I fill in the gap with a blank wall and below, start building another fire pit, this time much larger than the previous. This would sit either side of the entrance to lighten things up a little bit at night. I built up a little platform for it to sit on before coming back over to the hound statues. I realised the gold plating on either side of the plinth was too garish, so I detailed it using black stone stairs and walls to create this eye design. With one done, I copied it to the other. I then repositioned the fire plinth higher as I planned to build the tower down. Now for some reason, the original fire pit on the floor still shows up in this recording clip and it persists throughout the remainder of it, which is strange and must be some sort of bug. So just try to ignore it and it will disappear in the next clip. Next to it, however, you see me building another much smaller statue. Originally, I planned to build a miniature pharaoh statue, but the blocks didn't allow me to put enough detail into the build to make it look anything like that. So instead, I resorted to combine the two already existing statues and to touch on what I briefly spoke about earlier, make an Anubis statue. This statue would sit embedded within the wall and part of the tower beneath the fire pit. I tweak some blocks and finish up the design before moving to the wall behind it and detailing it with some arching supports to hold up the overhang that's above and fill out the blank wall a little bit. With that done, I position the fire plinth statues against it and mirror the design to the other side, finishing the main entrance to the pyramid. I had some black concrete around to break up the black stone as it was starting to get a bit repetitive and decided to detail the large pharaoh statue. I was going to copy the same eye design that I used previously, but instead decided to design a sun incorporating a small amount of gold blocks. With the towers and entrance combined, it was starting to look like one whole piece. However, they still sat detached from the pyramid itself. So the next plan of action was to fix that. I continued the tower down and brought the platform backwards until it connected with the slope of the pyramid. I proceeded to copy the same section of wall from the front of the build and place it behind the statues and connect it once again into the slope. With it neatened up, I mirrored it to the other side and back in the center began making plans for my next design. 
Of course, I've already made a miniature one of these designs down below, but I wanted to make a large golden eye atop the entrance on the second level of the pyramid. Now this eye isn't like most typical Egyptian eye designs. Instead, because this was positioned in the middle of the pyramid, I wanted to make it kind of like the Illuminati eye. Now I promise I'm not in the Illuminati, <laughs> I just thought it'd look cool. I tweaked the shape of the whole design, figuring out how many rings I wanted the center of the eye to have. Made the top eyelid protrude out slightly over the bottom, and then repositioned the whole thing back further up against the pyramid. I wanted to give it a little bit of depth, gradually moving the gold further in with each ring into the eye. Now again, this is on a big gold wall, so we need to detail it and cover up most of that ugly grid-like texture that gold blocks make. I copied the same tower designs from the statues, making them smaller and detailing the walls of the tower. Connecting the tower along to the eye and atop it, making a third level to the pyramid. At this point, I must admit I was really struggling to figure out where I wanted to take this build from here. So after playing with a few designs, I resorted to copying the same entrance that we used down below and placing it to the very top of the pyramid on that third level, bringing it all the way back and connecting it into the slope. I made a small fire pit to sit either side of this entrance and then back down on the second level, made another small entrance into the pyramid. I like the idea of having multiple entrances in and out of the pyramid on different levels around it, but having only one entrance, the main entrance, to access the pyramid in the first place. Now, using the same wall design as earlier, once again, I brought it all the way back along towards the slope and then made a small walkway around the top level with that same fire plinth design from before, placing it on each corner. Similarly, in fact, as to how it was at the start of the build. Also see me adding another one of those large fire pits on the second level and finally filling in that gap in the wall with this little sun pattern design. Now, of course, I'm gonna continue that walkway all around the pyramid, placing each fire plinth on the corners. And next, I convert the remaining sandstone into blackstone. As I said earlier in the video, the blackstone and gold shows the pharaoh's riches. Plus, it's a different design and concept from the regular sandstone pyramids everyone else makes. I start sectioning up the pyramid and add some more gold accents before etching a custom circle and triangle design into the top section. I wanted to add lots of dimensions to the vast sides of the pyramid to make things really intricate and interesting. Next, I move down to the next two sections and begin mirroring the gold details I just added above, making things look really elaborate and ornate, just as the pharaohs would have liked it. I then decided to add the side entrances to the pyramid, copying around the pillar design I used before to keep things uniform and well matched. Of course, I had to add more fire pits before mirroring my design to the other side of the pyramid. Now, I find this next part super satisfying to watch as I etch out parts of the pyramid and then mirror the gold accents from the above sections. Since things were starting to look a little bit plain compared to the top section, I decided to begin etching similar designs into the lower levels. I started by working on this triangle pattern alongside the top entrance. Etching designs into the pyramid using black concrete as a backdrop really helps to break up the black stone without using too much gold, whilst adding lots of depth. Between the triangle pattern, I began etching out some designs inspired by ancient Egypt to give the build a bit more of an authentic feel. This particular hieroglyph is called Ankh, and it was used to symbolize life. Either side, I etched in some snakes, as I saw these feature in Egyptian hieroglyphs quite frequently. Of course, a build inspired by ancient Egypt wouldn't be complete without some scarab beetles, which I etched into the next level. The scarab beetle holding the sun represents the god Kepri, who was said to symbolize creation and rebirth. Alongside it, you'll see me mimicking a familiar triangle design inspired by that of the level above, before mirroring the whole design to the opposite side. For the back of the pyramid, I thought I'd mix things up a little bit and add wings to the scarab beetle. Given that there was more space without the entrance on this side. I then include the same triangle designs on each of the corners, followed by an Egyptian cat silhouette, typically associated with the goddess Basset, defender of the sun god Ra. As seen previously, I create a small triangle pattern along the top section to frame my design and mirror it to finish it off. For the bottom half of the pyramid, I create a large black plane detailing it with an outline and connecting it down into the landscape. 
With the design complete, I once again mirror it to every side of the pyramid, leaving a strip of black stone in the middle to add a little detail later on. To break up the basic pyramid structure slightly, I build out a large wedge of black stone from the black plane we just created and bury it down into the sand. This also helps to support the base of the pyramid and differentiate the design. I split it down the middle in two and add much finer details to each section, creating a steeper slope to connect up to the main pyramid, with the shape on top almost resembling that of a lightning bolt. To keep things symmetrical as usual, I mirror the completed design to all sides of the pyramid and manually fix up areas where it didn't meet the terrain correctly. Additionally, the grey steps that go up to the entrance didn't quite fit the rest of the build, so I converted them to sandstone to blend in with the desert. On the remaining large strips of black stone left on the centre of each side, I etch in the final pattern inspired by a large sun, similar to the design at the top of the pyramid. I then thought it'd be cool to add the little Trixie blocks flare and quite literally write my name in hieroglyphs on the side of the pyramid. <laughs> With the pattern complete and my signature inscribed, I copy it around to all sides to finish up the exterior. Now with the exterior complete, it's time to move on to the interior and transform this empty shell into a nicely decorated tomb. To start off, I begin to clear away the sand and flatten things off to start with a neater canvas. The majority of my work on the interior consists of walling off sections and creating separate floors. Having placed all of those designs on the exterior, it left the inside looking quite ugly. So I walled everything off to create one large chamber. As you can see, I copied the pillar and the fire plinth designs from the entrance to use inside. The pillars are adapted to make them tall enough to support the upper levels, and I position the fire plinths equally around the chamber to light things up a little, and do the same with the adapted pillars. I use the smaller fire plinths from the exterior towers for the second level and lastly some smaller ones than that for the uppermost level before adding some support beams onto the ceiling. Next it was time to add a sarcophagus in the centre of the chamber, surrounded by an ornate floor pattern, inspired by the patterns I etched onto the exterior. This floor pattern was the remaining feature from the desert temple that I wanted to incorporate into this build. Unfortunately, there is not a stash of TNT beneath it, but at least there's a pretty pan and a sarcophagus. <laughs> at this point in the video, you might be wondering why I'm back in World Painter. But for the final part of this build, I wanted to make the terrain a little bit more interesting. I found some crack PNGs on the internet and turned them into custom brushes. This way, I was relatively quickly able to do some interesting terraforming without compromising the build. I wanted to incorporate the cracks into the landscape to imply that the tomb had been disturbed, the pharaohs have woken, and the gods are displeased. I thought it'd be fun to add a little chaos into this picturesque desert dunes. Now we're back in Minecraft, you can see the cracks sprawling throughout the landscape. To finalise this chaotic scene, I filled the cracks with lava to accurately emulate what lies deep beneath. And with that, the transformation is complete.
hope you guys enjoyed the build. And if you want to see more of me doing these transformations of vanilla Minecraft structures, then as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, get this to 100,000 likes. Now, very quickly, I thought I'd clarify a few things. In my last video, I got a little bit of controversy regarding the world download for the Underground Kingdom. So to be clear this time and avoid any confusion, the world download for the Desert Pyramid will be up on my Patreon, which you can subscribe to to download this and all of my previous builds. Also, if you wish, you can purchase this once and then cancel your subscription so you're not going to get charged every month. But if you wish to stick around and support me, I see you guys. <laughs> That'd be very much appreciated. So thanks for watching this video and remember to click the links down below in the description to download Monster Legends and get your free rewards. And I'll see you in the next one. Mm, this won't be forever.